So I've been creating websites since 1994, first by hand coding like you know, the HTML, uh, and then using all sorts of tools from front page to Dreamweaver and uh, a variety of other ones that have gone away. But now we're using uh, mobile devices and iPads and all sorts of different screens, Apple TV. And we need to create websites that look beautiful from our mobile phones. And Zapt has a way to do that, and we're going to see it right now. Who are you? So I'm, uh, I'm Kelly Smith. Um, live up in Seattle, Washington. By day, I design and build software apps, mobile apps these days. Um, I'm one of those guys that carries a camera with me pretty much everywhere. Uh, I paint when I'm not working. And uh, when I'm not painting, I'm, I'm pushing pixels, basically. Very cool. What is Zapt? So Zapt is uh, an iOS app. Uh, the first version of, of the app uh, we released uh, about uh, almost a year ago now lets you make instant websites from your mobile phone. Um, and what we're here to talk about today is a whole new build that's going to be coming out soon. Uh, a new social website builder that, that we think is really, really cool. So we're excited about it. And why do we need to create a website from our mobile phone? I mean, I, you know, going back to 94 when I was hand coding, yeah. Well, why can't you just go to the web browser on your desktop PC and create a web browser there? Why, why is that not enough? When we first started working on this project, it was a little bit of an experiment. We wanted to sort of trivialize what it meant to make a website. Because if you're like me, I had been working on the Mosaic web browser back in 94. And um, uh, we just sort of felt there was you know, many circumstances where people don't really need to get into the HTML and the CSS and the JavaScript. You know, so many people have these devices in their back pocket. They take these beautiful high resolution photos. They're connected to a network. We basically thought to ourselves, what's important? Getting that content up there onto the web in a fast, timely manner from the beach chair that you're sitting on in Hawaii right then. We wanted to make websites not something you did when you got home. Yeah. And it, give me a sense of what we could do with uh, this new mobile website builder. What, what kinds of sites can we do and, and why would we use it? Um, so what's cool about Zap is it basically lets you add uh, text, links, photos uh, into one big bundle, which would be associated by a unique URL like most websites. But what we really like about it is we sort of take it to the next level. You can select your website theme right from the phone. Um, you can even invite other people to collaborate with you on that website. So the website can sort of grow in real time, whether you're working on it, whether you're sleeping, what have you. And when I create one of these, it, it, on your phone or on somebody else's phone, it would look almost like Instagram. It would show a new web page up, and then I, they would click on it and see the full web page. Or Tell me what the experience is like for So what's cool about Zap, it's most definitely an authoring tool. It's an authoring tool, as I said, for making social websites. But you know, like many great apps, you mentioned Instagram, there's sort of a television set component. So you're not always making uh, content necessarily. So in Zap, there is a feed of content sort of streaming through, through which is, you know, interesting websites that we think are, are kind of cool. Um, if you want to consume, you can go ahead and consume in the website just like you would in Instagram. When you're, when you're ready to author, those tools are right there for you. So, so let's say we're doing this wedding uh, and we're at a wedding this weekend. We're shooting pictures and I, I have a, a couple hundred, you have a couple hundred. But we're on our iPhones. How do we make it look good on a desktop computer like a 27-inch TV or an iPad? Or even other guests might be looking at it on their, on their phones. How, how does that all work? How does the system work? Yeah, so this is, this is the part I'm most excited about. So every zap that you make from your phone renders correctly um, on the device that you're consuming on. So if it's a laptop, like for example here, you can basically see that uh, you've got a very typical grid layout that you would see in sort of high-end photo type themes. Um, and then on the tablet, that exact same website looks exactly as it should in landscape mode, portrait mode, what have you. And then on the phone, they stack sort of vertically, sort of right down the phone. So this is another way of saying that every zap you make is truly adaptive and responsive for the device that you're viewing on, which there's a lot of talk around adaptive and responsive right now. Um, you get that for free right out of the box. I'm going to TechCrunch Disrupt with Rocky next week. Um, can we shoot a lot of photos there and then uh, add, add new ones to it? Because uh, you know, 
to me, a website is pretty hard coded. It's it's hard to update, you know, from especially from your mobile phone because it's hard to write, you know, HTML code from your mobile phone. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty tough. We haven't we haven't made a good HTML authoring tool for the phone yet. Um, yeah, so you can you can basically you know add to it, edit it whenever you want. You can delete photos whenever you want. You can add photos days later, weeks later. Um, I think I think that's kind of where you're going yeah. with this. Um, you know, it is like any other website in that you have complete control over the content that's shown there. The difference is that we just want to make it easier for people to get content up into the cloud wherever they are, yeah. whenever they wanted to, and with their friends. Most websites historically aren't social. I think we probably remember Tumblr has done an amazing job in that regard. And we've taken a lot of cues from Tumblr. We really like Tumblr, but this is a mobile first experience. Yeah. So today, we don't have a web editor. We will soon. But this thing is written from the ground up, starting from the phone. Yeah. A lot of websites are, are these creative sites where, where we just want to share some pictures, a little bit of text, a, a headline, that kind of thing. Yeah. What about business sites where I might want to take orders or sell something, put an e-commerce component in there? Do you, guys, do you guys have a sense of easily adding an e-commerce site onto the website, or, or is that way out, out of the bounds of what you're doing right now? No, it's exactly kind of where we're going. So getting all the social plumbing connected to this whole website experience was sort of job one for us. Yeah. The next step after we submit this to the App Store in about two weeks, um, we're going to move to what we sort of call website widgets. You know, when you think about websites, you know, there's often 10 or 20 commonly used websites, uh, widgets that you would see on a website, whether it's a contact form or a map, um, uh, maybe a little uh, PayPal, you know, PayPal plugin on the website. So we're going to treat all those things like widgets, and we're going to actually make them available right from the app. Um, and uh, we're also going to work on an iPad version, so you've got more working real estate to go ahead and move things around. Yeah. Are you able to put links into the website from your mobile phone? Because sometimes that's what I want to do on is like, hey, here's 10 other web websites that go along with this one. Is there anything like that? Absolutely. So you can add links. You can add bodies of text. Um, and uh, probably the very next thing that we're going to add, I'm thinking within the next month, is going to be video. Yeah. Uh, so you'll be able to shoot native video right from the device, and you'll be able to add it right to your website. And then following that, of course, you'll be able to add video direct from your YouTube or your Vimeo account as well. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And what about other uh, other media types? If I'm a journalist and I'm building a newspaper style thing about a news event, for instance, I'm using video, I'm using SoundCloud audio, and I'm obviously doing lots of pictures. Are you thinking about how to merge all those media types into one thing? Yeah, I mean, we are. When we started working on the re-architecture of this Zap 2.0 product, we, we really sort of tried to um, abstract this framework so that we could slot different things in as we thought of them, as customers told us what they really wanted to make. So, you know, as long as there are good, clean APIs out there from third-party services, um, we think we can plug those things in. So I suppose the criticism would be, you know, that's an app that does a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, most successful apps do very few things well. So, you know, we're talking about a pretty robust app here. You know, I'm not trying to put Dreamweaver in your phone, but um, uh, I think we're, we're definitely pushing the boundaries. It, it is a little tough to copy a JavaScript block of code and paste it on the phone. It can be done if you're really careful with it, but it yeah. is pretty tough. So I would assume that you're going to try to obfuscate as much of the JavaScriptness of the web as possible and make it push buttons to add things, right? Yeah, I mean, we're sort of all about no code, pretty much. Yeah. So, you know, there are so many third-party services out there that, that make this really, really easy for you. You know, add a, a, a tweet button to your website. You know, most of that work's done for us, so we can go ahead and just slot those things in, treat them like any other widget. There are just very, very few times, I think, where most people really need to, to get in and mess with code. Yeah. Um, the other thing I should sort of add, too, is that you know we take great care to make these themes look great. So you know we've probably got 40 themes done. Um, many of these themes look just like what a professional photographer would have paid thousands of dollars uh, to have you know five years ago. Now they're just free, right in the you know right in the app. So nine times out of ten, whatever theme you pick from us is going to look really really good. No, I'm I'm really excited by using this for a, a number of different use cases because. 
I'm always shooting pictures with my phone, the family stuff, and there's never a good place to tell everybody, go here and look at all the pictures. I mean, yeah. our default lately is like Facebook, you know, or Google Plus, but those aren't my places. They're right. somebody else's place and they're in charge and the, right. their layout is in charge. I'm not in charge of the layout or the look of it. Right. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. What's the identity system that you're using? I, you know, because you're adding some interactive elements to this, you know, collaboration and stuff like that. Are you, are you forcing us to sign on to Facebook or tell, me, tell us about that? So uh, when you download the app, you can basically create an account either using Facebook or with your, your email address. Um, I know there are lots of apps out there that require you to use Facebook and there was a little bit of backlash around that. So you can create uh, uh, an account, you know, with your own email if you want to. Once you've done that, you can, as I said, you can basically invite friends from your Facebook account after the fact or from your address book and they'll get an email. Um, so we're not sort of explicitly trying to tie you to our identity system or Facebook's. You basically yeah. have the option. Yeah. Uh, what's the business model here? We've taken great care, as I said, to have really premium themes and we're going to go ahead and sell some of our themes. Um, we think some of our more powerful widgets, you know, people pay, you know, in the app 99 cents for some of those things. And um, believe it or not, we're even sort of working on initiative to let people register root level URLs for some of these websites. Yeah. Are you thinking of adding any of the sensor data off the phone other than the camera sensor? Because where I'm taking a photo uh, can be captured by these phones now. It, you know, they have a GPS sensor and they also have a compass sensor. They know which direction I'm aiming. So if we're shooting the Golden Gate Bridge, you should be able to know, oh, you know, which direction everybody is aiming at when they're shooting photos. Are you thinking about doing really, really taking the mobileness of the uh, camera device uh, further? That's one of the cool things about having an app like this that starts from your phone. You know, we know where you are and your old computer when you were in Dreamweaver, you know, back in 99, didn't really have any sense of that. So the first idea we have to kind of take advantage of that is, you know, dynamically pushing themes that might pertain to the time of year or even to where you're at. So if you're at a professional soccer game, we fully intend to push down, you know, three or four or five themes that pertain to that event that night based on where we think you're at. Um, so, so that's a totally new model, which we think makes absolute sense. Yeah. And again, um, this isn't so much about location, but just seasonality. Um, you know, if you could just go out and rattle off 10 or 15 pictures and uh, package them up in a holiday centric theme and then email that to your friends or post it on Facebook, that makes total sense for us. Makes sense for a Valentine's Day kind of card, right? Instant Valentine's Day card, like right from the phone. And when Valentine's Day passes, that theme will go ahead and roll out, you know, in a week or two's time, and you can sort of go back to those other professional themes that are in, in the app. Well, this is what, I, what I'm writing a book about is contextual software, and I, I believe that kind of context is going to affect every piece of software, or every service out there, and it's nice to see wh where you guys are thinking about it. What, any last thoughts of where this is going and what it could be used for? We're truly a mobile first company. So we are going to have a web editor, but we didn't start with one. We're not a company that had this big web experience and then sort of made a, an app as an afterthought. You know, we spent a lot of time thinking about, you know, how can we pack all this functionality, not just what we have now, but some of the things you and I have talked about here, into an app that's still really easy to use. So I don't know if it's, if it's a, a final thought, so to speak, but, you know, we're very, very curious around you know, how we pack more and more functionality into such a small experience and still make it something that's easy for people to use. Uh, where do I learn more about it? Is it just zap.com? Zap.com, Z-A-P-D.com. Very cool. Thanks for coming on. Thanks Show for having us. It's really awesome. It's fun.